Hi all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. Well, here's another doozy for you. A Houston police officer was arrested on June 12th of 2023 after shooting his wife in the face with a rifle. And believe it or not, as of the time of this video, the victim is reportedly out of surgery and in stable condition. That's a miracle. Houston police say they received a 911 call shortly after midnight, reporting a shooting at the apartment complex where Ghalib Chowdhury and his wife of only one year live. When they arrived on scene, they found Chowdhury's wife, who they have not named, with shotgun wounds to her face and hand. She was immediately rushed to the hospital for emergency surgery, and shortly after, Chowdhury who was off-duty at the time, was arrested and charged with aggravated assault of a family member with serious bodily injury. Even though his wife is currently in stable condition, police are saying that the charge against Chowdhury can change if things change. According to Houston PD, Chowdhury had been a police officer for two years, but has now been fired and will be both criminally investigated and internally investigated. Houston PD seemed to be pretty confident it was intentional DV during their press conference. Charge warrants, um, but let me back up and give you some detail. Uh, but I do uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, so this morning, and it's never, uh, it's never easy uh, to stand before you. Uh, domestic violence is is, is very serious um, in our neighbor, in, in our community, and also around the nation. Um, and, and we stand here at HPD to do everything that we can uh, to prevent that. I have Lieutenant Julie Pleasant um, with our Victim Services um, Unit, and we'll give a statement and, and some tips on uh, some things that we offer here at the, at the department. So let me back up and, and knock out some details of the incident. Uh, so um, shortly after midnight this morning, uh, we received a call uh, for service, um, a shooting. Um, at, uh, 10,333 Clay Road. Um, when officers arrived um, to uh, that apartment, um, they uh, came up on a female that was um, had sustained a gunshot wound uh, to the face. Uh, shortly thereafter, our officers determined that it was an off-duty HPD officer. Uh, that officer is assigned to Northwest Division. He's 31 years old. Uh, has two years of service. Um, I will not be releasing um, the names at this time. Uh, we are actively uh, filing charges. He has been arrested, um, and it's our policy. Um, we don't release the name until uh, that charging document has been um, um, completed. Um, the female, um, this is 31, I'm sorry, 30-year-old female, um, again, sustained a gunshot wound to the face uh, she um, underwent surgery, um, and uh, hopefully, and we pray that she's going to be all right and uh, make a full recovery. Um, and we ask everybody to pray uh, for uh, that female. Um, the mother of, we contacted the mother and spoke to the mother. Um, but again, it's, it's a sad um, process and, and, and our procedures um, here at HBD. That officer is immediately relieved of duty. Um, as per policy, um, a special investigative unit uh, will conduct the investigation, uh, criminal investigation. Um, ID is conducting the um, administrative investigation. Again, um, Lieutenant Julie Pleasant will make some statements here. Um, he's relieved of duty. And let me say this. Um, just want everybody to understand it's, it's a really an active um, investigation. Um, I want to respect that process and we'll, we'll share what we can, but understand it's, it's really active right now. And as I stated just a few moments ago, uh, we're pursuing the, the, the charges. Um, so before we get to questions, I, I want to bring up uh, Juliet Pleasant uh, just to give uh, a few statements, a few tips, and then uh, Chief uh, Garcia will uh, provide um, statement translated in Spanish and then I'll be back up for questions. Okay. Go ahead. 
Good morning. Um, my name is Julie Pleasant again, Victim Services Division. For the citizens of Houston, as everybody knows, domestic violence is a very violent crime. It's one of the most dangerous for officers as well as the victim. So if we have anyone um, who is listening to the sound of this broadcast, please know that if you're in immediate danger, you need to call 911. Secondly, if you're in the city of Houston and you're aware of someone who may be involved in a domestic violence situation, or you see something, please say something. We also have the Houston Area Women's Center. Uh, you can reach out to, their number is 713-528-2121. Again, 713-528-2121. And then there's the National uh, Domestic Violence Hotline, which is 1-800-799-7233. Again, 1-800-799-7233. Fortunately for the city of Houston, the mayor and the chief have found it to be incredibly important to have a unit like the Domestic Abuse Response Team, which partners an officer and an advocate to respond to uh, serious bodily injury, strangulation, and continuous violence calls. So if you're in the city of Houston, DART can respond and will respond to your calls. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, Chief, I'll turn it back thank over. You. What was the exact charges? So, thank you. Um, aggravated assault, uh, deadly weapon, um, and, and it's the district attorney's office. I know that they're still, uh, all investigators are still in uh, communication and, and, and uh, writing up this, this charge. So, that could be. Uh, um, enhanced here um, uh, later, but right now it's aggravated assault, deadly, deadly weapon. Was a woman his girlfriend? I'm sorry, it's, it's his wife. His wife. Yes. Okay. yes. Would, would you give us the, the, the debrief that the officer gave in Spanish? What happened? What happened now? Basically, um, what we know right now is, is um, uh, our officer um, shot um, his wife. Um, now, we don't have all the details there. It's part of the investigation. Um, so. That's what we know right now. That's what he's been charged for. So we don't know if there was a dispute. We just know he just shot her. We don't know. That act, that investigation is okay. still very, very active. Okay. My Spanish is a little weak, but I thought I heard the officer, the other chief, say that, that, that someone called, said there was a police officer, who, the person who pulled the trigger, worked for HPD. Were those, did I get those? I don't, did get yeah. Wrong? What, yeah. I don't. I don't know, and I don't want to talk of, of, sure. in, in terms of, of the Spanish because I'm sure. not a Spanish speaker. So forgive yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And two, I want to. I want to say this too, um, and forgive us all. Uh, two nights uh, we've been up, and, and and we're all a little bit tired, so it was not coming across clearly. Sure. You know, we, we chalk it up to that. But next question. We don't we don't know at this time, um, and, and uh, that's going to be part of the investigation. But I did, and even though it's been delayed, did want to get up as quickly as we could. Um, it, it, it was uh, getting the warrant was there was a delay in that, and you know, so that's what I didn't want to get out front of that with a statement. I wanted to ga gather as much information as, as as I could. Okay. What kind of weapon was used? Was it his HPD issued gun? Um, I think it was a, it was a rifle. Yes. Okay. Rifle. You have one in the back, I'm sorry. Did you, you good? Okay, yes, so okay. We don't, we don't issue um, um, rifles, but uh, it could have been his rifle that he self-purchased and registered through the agency, but that's part of the uh, investigation. How is she doing now? Uh, praying that, that she, she's okay, um, but um, you know, we're just gonna wait to get the, from the report and then uh, respect her rights to uh, privacy, HIPAA laws too, but uh, as soon as we can and the family gives us uh, um, the okay, we'll put that out as well. Sorry, did you say she was in surgery or no? She did. I don't know if she's still in surgery. I know that she uh, went into, so I don't know if it's, she's still in surgery okay. or out right this moment. Was the officer on a specific beat or a part of a certain program? What type of work did he do? I'm not. He's just assigned to patrol. I don't know the specific beat, but we'll send that out. When we send out the, uh, the name and all that, we'll, we'll test that to it. Yes, Obviously, Chief. You hold your employees to a certain standard on and off duty. Can you explain, like, what, like, what do you tell your guys, Lee? Uh, look, as I said, I started. It's difficult. Uh, we all 
took an oath of office to serve and protect. Um, um, but we're human as well, and and this hurts. Okay, uh, it, it hurts all of us. Uh, when um, and, and I'm not going to indict him right now. I want to respect his, his due. But what we know now, it hurts, and and I don't want people to forget about the great great work that thousands of officers do every day. Um, and, and this is an exception rather than the rule, and I want to stand on that. But at the same time, um, I think it's important for the public to know um, there's accountability here at HPD. And um, re respecting the due process, uh, I'm expediting uh, my administrative part on it. And, and, and that's a promise. Respecting that process, though. It was no one in the home that, that uh, was there. I don't know if, uh, if they have uh, children or not, but uh, no one was at home. It was just the uh, husband and wife. Do we know if that officer was a part of it, a partnership with the uh, apartment complex, maybe on duty during that time? I, I just don't have that right now. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? And this happened yeah. inside their apartment? Yes. Yes. Does the department have any policies for domestic violence committed by officers, whether it's police or whatever? What is it? Absolutely. Uh, we, we, uh, we have to abide by the law and then we have to go by our policy. Nobody can do anything um, here um, that's not becoming of a police officer and, and, and you know, not be uh, disciplined in some kind of way. And uh, I just stated that um, I'm going to respect the process, but when something like this happens, um, I'm, ex I'm expediting my administrative um, um, process. So. Now, as the story is unfolding, Click2Houston.com is reporting that Chowdhury allegedly told police what happened that night. And rather than try to explain it to you, I'm just going to read what they reported. Officials said Chowdhury called 911 and said someone was breaking into his apartment. The suspect told officers he and his wife had been home for about 30 minutes. He said their doors were unlocked and they were having a conversation. Chowdhury told authorities his wife went to open the door and he heard a loud boom. He then told investigators he fired his weapon while his wife accidentally got in the way of him trying to shoot the suspect. I hope this was his full statement to police. I really do. And as much as I don't want to insult your intelligence at all by stating the obvious, because I know you just heard what I read, I also know that you won't deny me the pleasure of tearing into it for just a moment or two. Yeah, if someone's breaking into his home and the doors were unlocked, I'm pretty sure there wouldn't be much breaking in, since they'd, all they'd have to do is open the door and walk right in, right? So why would his wife need to open the door? And if they thought somebody was breaking in, why would his wife want to open the door, potentially endangering them both? And exactly how dangerous would an intruder be who wasn't even able to get through an unlocked door? Make it make sense. And why wouldn't Chowdhury yell for his wife to get down or get out of the way before he took a shot? I mean, hell, he is a trained police officer. Wouldn't his wife's safety be all that mattered to him at that point? Again, make it make sense. Please, because I got nothing. Police also said that inside the living room of the apartment, they reportedly found a pile of clothing with hangers still attached and a piece of luggage. Weird. And even weirder? They said that during Chowdhury's court appearance, text messages he allegedly sent to his wife before the shooting were read. Prosecutors said he appeared upset, telling her to pick up the phone. Then he texted her, calling her a B-word and demanding to know where she was. Sounds like the guy had a rough night. Couldn't find his wife, then a break-in at his apartment. All while he was, what, packing for vacation? A romantic getaway? I wonder what the story about the clothes and the luggage will be. I suppose if it makes a lick of sense, it'll be better than the think-of-something-quick story that he already gave. The article also reads 
that Chowdhury's wife wasn't willing to give a statement, but investigators said she told medical staff her husband shot her, and it was an accident. Then, this partial video recording of Chowdhury's hearing was released by KHOU 11 News. The officers attempted to gather the complainant's statement before going into surgery. However, she was not willing to provide a statement when she heard that the officers were with the Houston Police Department. How terrifying. What do you think? Please join me in praying for his victim, that she makes a full recovery and stays safe. I wish I had her name to share with you, but... Prayers up or prayers up, either way. God help her. She's going to need it. I hope she has a strong support system around her to help her through this. I plan to keep an eye out for updates on this one. What a tragic situation. Chowdhury is currently being held on a $125,000 bond. Thank you all so much for watching. I super appreciate the time you share with me on my channel. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you on my next video.